How's it going everyone? This is High Yield MCAT and today we're going to be talking about a particular classification of amino acids, specifically the acidic or polar amino acids, of which there are two. So I think this is a great place to start learning about our amino acids just because we have this nice short category, category of two amino acids. And we're going to call them aspartic acid and glutamic acid. Now these are often referred to as aspartate and glutamate. So let's start with aspartic acid, going through each thing, each individual item of knowledge that we need to know for the MCAT exam. So first, beyond the full name, the three letter abbreviation of aspartic acid is pretty intuitive. It's just ASP or ASP. However, on the other hand, the one letter abbreviation is less intuitive. It is D. So if we see a D, that represents our aspartic acid. Now let's draw out our structure. And this is going to be very important for doing well in the MCAT. So our structure, we're going to start off with our basic backbone. That's going to be common to every single amino acid. And then our R group is going to be what makes aspartic acid aspartic acid. So we draw one carbon away from our alpha carbon another carbon away from our alpha carbon. And then on this final carbon, we're gonna have a carboxylic acid group. And that is going to be deprotonated at physiological pH. So we draw it as a negative. So we have an overall net negative charge of negative one. Now our classification, of course, since we are going over acidic or polar amino acids. So the reason why we have polar in parentheses is that they are more fundamentally acidic, but because they are ionic in charge, and of course have oxygens, they're going to be particularly polar. Now moving on to the PKR, or more specifically, the PKA of the R group that's coming off of the C alpha carbon, we're gonna memorize this as approximately four for the MCAT. It's really more around 3.6, but we just need to know that carboxylic acid PKA is going to be around four. Now as far as special characteristics, aspartate can form ionic bonds and that is because it is negatively charged in physiological pH, so it can form ionic bonds. It can also serve as an acceptor in H bonding. Now that means it has some free electron pairs, so that's going to be these specific electron pairs and these electron pairs, and of course in the resonance structure of this carboxylic acid, that are going to be able to accept donor H's from other compounds in the formation of a hydrogen bond. All right, now that we've covered aspartate, let's take a look at glutamic acid or glutamate, which is going to be quite similar. So again, with our three letter abbreviation, it is quite intuitive. We have GLU. Now our one letter abbreviation for glutamic acid is not as intuitive. However, it is related to that of aspartic acid. So D and E are alphabetically together in the alphabet, so A, B, C, D, E. And aspartic acid and glutamic acid are both acidic amino acids. So this is one way you can chunk the memorization of your acidic amino acids together is remembering that D and E are together in the alphabet and aspartic acid and glutamic acid are both acidic polar amino acids. So perhaps most importantly, let's get down to the structure of glutamic acid. So drawing out our backbone of the amino acid, which will be common to all amino acids, and then drawing out our R group. So it's very similar to aspartate, but instead of one, two carbons, we have one more carbon before we have our carboxyl group. And again, this is negatively charged at physiological pH, carrying a net negative charge in the entire molecule of negative one. Again, since we're going over acidic polar amino acids, our classification is acidic polar. Our PKR, in this case, will also be approximately four. 
it's really more around 4.25, so a little bit less acidic than aspartic acid, remembering that our pKa's, the more negative they are, the more acidic our compound. But really, for purposes of the MCAT, we can know that they're both around 4. Now, for special characteristics, it's going to be very similar to aspartic acid because they have the same functional group. So the same exact thing, can form ionic bonds because they're negatively charged. So they're going to be able to complex with positively charged things, particularly positively charged or basic amino acids. And they can also participate in hydrogen bonding as an acceptor. So acceptor in H bonding. So that is it actually for the high yield content. Now for the rest of the video, I'm going to clear up some uh, perhaps misconceptions about the acidic polar amino acids. So feel free to stop here if you feel comfortable, but particularly I'm going to go over the difference between aspartic acid and aspartate and glutamic acid and glutamate. All right, so what exactly is the difference between aspartate and aspartic acid? Why do we call each the way we do? Well, there actually is a qualitative difference between aspartate and aspartic acid and between glutamate and glutamic acid. Aspartate is the ionized form. So by ionized, we mean we have this negative charge because our proton has been given up to solution. Now, aspartic acid is the protonated form, or it still has its proton. So there is that fundamental qualitative difference between aspartate and aspartic acid. Now you may be asking yourself, which one is the right form? Well, to answer this, we need to know that physiological pH is 7.4. Now that's something you definitely need to know. And that the pKr of COOH on aspartic acid is approximately 4. And the same is going to be true of glutamic acid. So if our physiological physiological pH is greater than our pKr, that means we're mostly going to have the negative species of whatever acid we're looking at. Therefore, in physiological pH, aspartate is by far the dominant form. And that is because in the aqueous solution of our body, that hydrogen will already have been given up to water, forming a hydronium ion. And that's what's actually going to change the pH of the solution when you drop an acid in. That acid will give up its hydrogen to solution, therefore becoming negative charged. Now, one common point of misconception is that if aspartate is negatively charged, why do we consider it an acidic amino acid? Generally, we consider things that are negatively charged to be bases, don't we? The way we can answer this is with a titration curve and the henderson hasselbalch equation, which we'll go over in a later video. But this titration curve shows us our physiological pH of 7.4, and it's sandwiched in between the pKr and the pK2. So the pK2 is corresponding to our nitrogen here, our N terminus. Our pK1 is corresponding to our C terminus here. And then our pKr, of course, is corresponding to our functional group on aspartic acid. Now because pH is between the pKr and the pK2, the only functional group that is going to retain its proton is going to be the N terminus, and that's going to correspond to pK2. Now because the pH is greater than pKr, the negative form is going to be predominant in the solution. Therefore, acidic amino acids in a certain sense in the body are negative because they have already performed their function as an acid by giving up their proton to solution to make the solution itself a lower pH or more acidic. All right, so that's it today for High Yield MCAT. Feel free to like and subscribe and leave a comment letting me know what you would like to see next on your MCAT exam.